hello and welcome to this You Care Level Up webinar. My name is Marcus, Marcus Maurer. I'm joining you from Berlin. And today's topic is very specific to the You Care Network, how to do a scientific project with other You Cares, with the You Care office, within the You Care Network. And I'm very happy to have you with us to uh, see how this is done. And this could also be interesting for you if you come from outside of our network, simply to see how we do projects and what is behind that publication that you're reading, all the work, all the setup, all the logistics and all the efforts that the UK Networks puts into its work. I have a couple of slides for you just to uh, show you what we are being uh, uh, covering today and um, I have uh, from, from the get-go to say thank you. Thank you very much, Hannah, Emek, and Julia. Um, you out there on your screens can look forward to a stellar faculty. Uh, Hannah and Emek, of course, um, uh, seasoned UCARE project leaders, and Julia, who takes care of all UCARE projects in the UCARE office. They will share with you uh, different aspects. Hannah will kick us off with insights on the importance of you care projects. I will show you the 10 easy steps to running a you care project. Then Emek will share from her experience what she uh, thinks is especially important when you start a project and complete it. And then Julia will share with us how the you care office and the team here in Berlin at the you care office can help you and everyone to run you care projects. Now, we have uh, registrations from 19 countries, which is great, of course. We are in many more countries as a UCARE network. And we really want to thank all of the UCARES who are participating in our projects, who have started projects, and our sponsors who support us running these projects. And without further ado, I would then ask that you, Hana, kick us off with your presentation on, well, why should we do a UK project? What can we learn from it? And maybe also a little bit why it is so much fun, rewarding uh, to be a UK project leader. Yes, thank you, Markus, for your kind introduction. I'm very happy and also excited um, to talk about the importance um, of UK projects today. And of course, this is um, a huge honor for me. So why are UK um, projects important? Um, and as you can see um, here, of course, um, I think in the last years and also decades, we learned a lot about Urticaria. But um, there is still room for improvement. So um, if you compare the number of the literature, for example, with other inflammatory common um, diseases, then um, we have um, a lot more to do um, in the field of urticaria. And especially in the field of the pathogenesis and etiology of urticaria, but also regarding um, genotypes, endotypes and phenotypes, biomarkers and predictors, treatment op options, especially beyond antihistamines and umalizumab and novel and further aspects, there's uh, still a lot um, to do and there are many, many open questions. So um, that's um, yeah where um, we get into the game, um, the you cares. So um, right now, um, I think I'm correct. Julia, correct me if I'm wrong. I think we have 139 you cares. And um, these are our Oticaria centers of reference and excellence all around the world. Um, and I think our centers are, um, I would say, a gold mine for more knowledge. Um, so we um, should um, further connect and work together. And um, if you don't believe me, um, I've got the best example. This is the PREXIU project, which um, is um, a really nice result of a UK initiative um, led by Emek, who's here today. And there are 21 UKs um, gathered together from um, 13 different countries. And I think it's a really nice example because you all know that, um, yeah, we have many female urticaria patients and they get pregnant. And if they come to the clinic, they ask you, 
what's happening now uh, during the pregnancy with my CSU, what's, what's happening? And then I'm just saying, okay, this is so easy because we did some really nice research and I take this article and show it to them and say, okay, so we know that 50% of patients with um, yeah, CSU during pregnancy get better um, 20% stay the same and up to approximately a third um, can, can also get um, worse. And I think this is so practical and so helpful that we can now have um, yeah, results which we can present our patients and show again the importance of our network. Um, so this is yeah one really nice example um, for um, uh, an advantage of UCAP projects. Um, but there are many, many more. And, and I tried to yeah, um, collect nine advantages, which I will shortly present um, to you. And I think um, yeah, the, the heading of all those um, advantages is you never walk alone. Really, you are never alone. And I think if you have Marcus here, <laughs> so Marcus is always there and the team as well. So you are never alone. Um, so first important advantage is that you can get the inspired by past and current projects. So I am a lot, a lot inspired by Prexiu and you can go on our website and look at the current projects, um, but also in the past projects, you can um, click on those buttons and then you find um, a lot of information, you find the publication and it's, it's really nice. So you can get inspired by all the work which has been done to, um, um, until today. Um, there's a very easy application process and I don't want to get um, into detail here because Marcus will guide you through this um, soon, but this is really easy and again, you are not alone. Um, we have the UK office support and um, there that's a really nice team. So it's Rebecca, Reinhardt, Alice, and especially Julia, who is um, here today um, as well. And she um, yeah, is the head of the scientific project and um, our contact um, for all questions arising during the process um, of a UCAP project. And it's also very easy to contact her, but also contact the whole office team. You can go through the website, but we will also show you an email address later on. Um, another advantage um, is that, yeah, you get a um, project advisor and um, you can't see the oil now, so I will show it here. Um, <laughs> um, so you get a project advisor for your project. So again, I said it, but I will say it um, one more time. You are not alone. You get a, someone who's really experienced in the field and who has a, a strong scientific interest in the project and um, who helps you um, yeah, to start the project and to go through all the steps. And there's also a steering committee, so further um, experience um, researchers which um, support you in the project. Um, so then um, it's a stepwise approach. So you don't have to start big, you start um, in a proof of concept. So in your center, you, you start with this study, you start with the project, um, everyone makes mistakes, so you go through it, you find um, um, improvement, you optimize the project, and then um, you do the global rollout, you um, bring this to other UK centers, and um, <clears throat> so again, um, there is um, po potential um, yeah, to um, develop and to become stronger with your project. And um, of course, you can um, collaborate with um, other UK centers and you shouldn't or you don't have to stay in your country, for example. You can um, go out, um, you can um, learn more about different countries, about different approaches in different countries, about different cultures. And um, this is um, also very important and also very fruitful if you um, work um, with um, yeah, fur further um, countries. And in the end, um, as I've already showed you, um, shown you there, there are valuable scientific um, findings which you get if you uh, work on such a project. And in the end, um, there are publications and um, the Prexiu project. This was only yeah one um, study which um, I've sh I showed I've shown you. So there are um, further articles now uh, regarding the treatment patterns, which are very important, but also uh, regarding biomarkers, um, total IgE levels, for example. 
um, which have been um, published. And um, there are other um, successful projects um, where we have data now, for example, the Curic project, which was um, led by Ivan Sheris or Yeda. And he could show that um, our chronic urticaria patients are very interested in apps to monitor their disease activity and control. And now we have an uh, app. So um, this is also um, yeah, somehow basis for a new development um, and this was um, one of the first UK projects. But there's also um, Cold Scene. I think Mocha is also um, listening to us. So um, there are yeah, also very, very important findings in regard to cold urticaria patient, patients about um, risk factor and the um, use of um, yeah, the emergency kit, the adrenaline, um, which we now know and which we now um, yeah. Um, have in our knowledge and um, could focus um, on um, in our clinical practice. And another really hot topic is the COVAX U project. Um, so preliminary, preliminary data from the Qatar co cohort has already been published um, also by Emek and her team. Um, but there will be more data soon. And I think Emek will also um, present um, some experience um, from her projects today. So um, another advantage is, and this is just um, in case this was a little bit too overwhelming for you. So if an own project for the start um, seems to be too much, yeah, please join a running project with your UCARE. So we have many current um, projects, uh, which you can see on the website, and uh, you can just start um, joining one and then learning and then doing your own um, project. Um, so I think there are only good reasons um, to work on a UK project. And um, I thank you for your attention. And I hand over to you, Marcos. Thank you very much, Hannah. Well done. Uh, getting everyone excited about running a project and participating in a project. And you didn't even mention your own project, which is super interesting and important uh, in itself. And we're looking forward to the first publication coming soon from Uvalsicu, where we look at uh, urticaria vasculitis versus chronic urticaria. Thank you so much, Hannah. Um, I think people will take you uh, by your word that anyone who's interested in learning how to do a project or how to participate in a project is very welcome to reach out to all of our uh, previous project leaders, including you and Emek and Moitza and, and, and Ivan, you know, all, all very nice people who live to transport all these insights that they have gained over the course of running their UK projects with everyone else in the network. And with that, let me show you a little bit about what is behind running a UK project, the 10 easy steps of a UK project roadmap. And it really starts with a good idea. Doesn't it always start with a good idea? Now, a good idea means you have an idea for a project that you think makes sense, answers an, a, a question that has not yet been answered. And often, very often, this is an idea that came to you during a small project that you did with your UCARE or a publication that you read where you think, well, wouldn't it be nice to follow up on that with a larger patient population? Look, I, I read a lot of papers and I often see this should be confirmed in a more diverse and bigger patient population. And absolutely so. We get good answers from good patient cohorts and size matters. So having a global patient population to ask questions and to get information from can be so important. And uh, having the idea of what to do and how to do it is the very first step. And once you think this is a good idea, maybe you discuss with your colleagues or another you care, you check if it is possible to run this as a you care project. And you apply, you go to our website, you download this very simple form uh, that says why you want to do, what you want to do, and how you want to do it. You send that to the UCARE office, Yulia is already waiting for it, to then share with the UCARE steering committee members. And they have a big uh, picture. They see what's going on um, and they know all the other UCARE projects. They will make sure that your project is unique and the best project it can be. In other words, 
They will give you advice on how to shape it, tweak it, make it better, um, and they will help you to bring this project to life. So the UCARE office is your first point of contact to see if this is something that is of interest, if it's not a duplicate, if it's uh, really a promising project, and then the UCARE steering committee will help you to bring it to completion over the entire uh, time span of the project. What does that mean? It means that you will have a, an advisor uh, like uh, Hannah said, you will have someone with a lot of experience, a member of the steering committee, of the UCARE steering committee, to be your advisor. And the, one of the first things that th this advisor will do, it will help you to put together a project steering committee, because you don't want to do this alone. You want to do this with a team. You want to benefit from all the ideas that the other uh, project steering committee members have. Ideally, three to seven people, diverse backgrounds, maybe an allergist in there, maybe a dermatologist in there, someone from Asia, some from, from Latin America, so that you can really run a global project and you have advocates and ambassadors of your project in the different geographical regions. These people usually then have a very strong background and interest in your project. They know people, they have their own networks so that you can form a strong team that can motivate all you cares to participate in your project. And then the work starts because now you have a project, now you have a team, now you have support from the UCARE office and steering committee. Now you start to shape your project. And we have many different projects. Some of them work with surveys where you develop a survey for patients that gets answered by patients. You retrieve the information, the data, and you compare. We have projects that are aimed at physicians. Now you develop a survey for physicians. We have projects that require and include provocation testing. Now you develop a protocol where all the UCARES in the world will use the same protocol to obtain the information, obtain the samples, obtain the data that you want to have. So these project tools, documents, and questionnaires need to be developed, and it's a ping pong, where you start with the draft, the steering committee, project steering committee helps you to shape it. You will have a meeting, video conferences, where you discuss, you don't want to have too much in your project, but you also don't want to have too little. You want to have just the perfect tools that bring the project to success. And of course, you will get a lot of data. So you need a database where you can enter or have entered all the data that the different UCARES will contribute. You need then analysis, support, and possibly help in writing up, in interpreting the data to arrive at a manuscript. But we're not there yet. First, we need to have approval, regulatory ethics approval at your center. And again, you can count on the expertise of those who help you. And once you have that approval, it is being sent out to the other members of your steering committee so that they can get approval as needed. And that's where the fun then really starts because now you're in place to rock and roll. What does that mean? You can start the pilot phase of your project. The pilot phase is uh, of short duration and aims to make sure that everything works out. You don't want uh, to try an error in the global phase. You want to do that in the pilot phase. So this is a, the learning curve of your project where you and the other you cares of your steering committee uh, member uh, fellows will use the instrument, will start to collect data, will start to enter data. We'll look at the first results together so that you see where are the problems. Where is there a need for optimization of the process, of the tools, of the communication? And so once you have this learning curve behind you and everything is perfect, this is when the global rollout starts. And then at this point, you want to bring as many UCARES on board. The UCARE office will help you. You want to present at a UCARE conference or the Global Anticaria Forum so that people know about your project and want to contribute. And you want to incentivize that. So you want to put out rules 
so that people see what is in them, uh, what is in what is in the uh, in the in the for them when they participate in the project. For example, do they need to include ten patients or fifty patients in order to become a co-author? You make these rules together with your steering committee. You communicate these rules, and you make sure that in the end they're being brought on board. So the global rollout is the most exciting part, where every week you see more and more patients being included in your database, where every week you get feedback from the other UCARES that things are going well, that they now have ethics approval and can start, that now they have their first 50 patients included. So this is a lot of fun in communicating with your fellow UCARES. Of course, some of these tools need to be translated into the language of the country um, th that wants to participate. And again, as a network, we do this together. If there is a country with more than one UCARE, these UCARES usually split the task of translating the survey or the ethics approval or the informed consent for patients. And with all of this in place, you start to collecting hundreds, thousands, maybe more data sets that in the end will need data evaluation. And if you are not in a place where you say, ah, no problem, statistics, my favorite, I can do that, or I have a team in place, come back to us, come back to the UCARE office and have our statisticians help with your analysis. And once you have the results, well, then it's time to write them up, to communicate them at meetings, including UCARE meetings, and of course, to publish them so that the world knows about the findings from UCARE your UCARE project, and again, the UCARE office, the UCARE steering committee, your UCARE project steering committee, and all UCARES will help with dissemination. Make sure it gets read, make sure that it goes into our social media channels so that people are made aware of it, make sure that it gets cited, and possibly be the first step in a follow-up UCARE project to answer the questions that came from your project. So you see, we want to encourage you to start a project. We want to encourage you to participate in projects. By participating in projects, you see how this is being done. See one, do one, teach one. You be a UCARE member in a project. You are a UCARE leader in a project. And then you teach others how it is done. This is how we can, especially when it comes to the next generation UTCariologist, spread the knowledge, spread the expertise, spread the excitement, and run many successful projects in our network. With that, Emek, I'm going to turn to you because um, like all UCARE projects, yours was very successful in turnout, but also in the learnings. You know? um, at uh, the very start of our network, we didn't really know how this would work, how this is done. And your projects, as those of the other project leaders, have really helped us to understand what is needed to make you successful and to make it fun for you to be a UK project lead. Emek, your screens, uh, our screens are yours. Yes, thank you, Marcus. Thank you, Hannah, for these kind, nice introductions. Uh, it's a pleasure for me to be presenting my experiences uh, from the projects, pro from my UK project journeys. I am hoping to, uh, uh, I'm hoping to uh, inspire our UK colleagues uh, to do uh, UK projects. And uh, I will go over uh, my experiences from what I learned uh, and want to go over the steps by giving examples so that maybe I can give some uh, practical tips and tricks on how to do you care projects and uh, not to regret afterwards that I didn't do this, I didn't do that. So as Hannah nicely uh, stated, you care is a gold mine. I, I really like this uh, term. And uh, the point is together we are stronger and we have a large uh, study population when we do a you care project. When you do it in your center, you have 100. If you do a you care project, then you have 1000 patients and very diverse population. 
populations, you can have uh, children and also adults, so uh, very diverse, different ethnicities, and uh, you can get advice from the experts of the field, you have the steering committee members, you have the project advisors, and it is the best platform to answer clinical questions that drives the scientific project. And uh, what uh, projects did I do? The PREC-CU and the COAC-CU projects I did, but I also did a, a study uh, which had to skip some steps of uh, doing a UCARE project because it was a very, uh, it had to be a very quick uh, study uh, which we needed answers uh, about how uh, we will proceed, how we will manage urticaria clinics in the time of uh, pandemic. So with the pandemic started, when the pandemic started, we had many uh, questions uh, from the UK centers, also from patients, from other physicians on how to manage urticaria patients. Uh, and we also wondered how our colleagues in urticaria centers were affected by the pandemics. And uh, for to answer these questions, we uh, performed the COVID-CU study and our uh, UK colleagues ni nicely collaborated with us. And we, uh, we could be able to see how the pandemics uh, uh, affected the patients and also the physicians. We saw that the physicians were also so much affected by uh, COVID-19 uh, pandemics and the patients had uh, exacerbation of their urticaria if they had the uh, infection. And uh, the second project was the PREC-CU project in which we wanted to uh, evaluate the impact of pregnancy on the course of chronic urticaria and also chronic urticaria's impact on pregnancy, as well as medications taken during pregnancy and lactation and outcomes of pregnancy. So this was the, my idea in uh, my mind because since, because as Hannah uh, told, we have many female urticaria patients, but we don't have any studies which evaluates the impact of uh, pregnancy on urticaria. So uh, I thought this was a good idea uh, to answer clinical questions. So I contacted the uh, UCARE office uh, to ask if there is a similar project and if uh, anybody contacted them uh, about doing a similar project. At those times, uh, we didn't indeed have many projects. So it was the first project. It was one of the first projects. I think Curict and uh, PREXCU started uh, at similar times. So they said that there is no ongoing project. So I submitted my proposal uh, to the UCARE office and uh, I can uh, for uh, writing the uh, this uh, project proposal, uh, they send you a, a template to the UCARE office, and so it's it makes easier for you to uh, type down your uh, details of your project. Uh, it is important to be precise uh, while writing uh, the details of your project, and you should answer. What are you going to do? Why is it? Uh, why is this work important? How are you going to complete the project? How long will it take? What is the budget and publication and authorship strategies? As Marcus already mentioned, then the UK office send, uh, sends out the scientific advisory board, um, and then you have the board decision. Here are the scientific advisory board, except me, of course. And uh, the board decision was positive for uh, my uh, project, PREC-CU project, and they uh, assigned Marcus as my project advisor. So we started with Marcus to uh, work on the uh, project. Then we assigned steering committee members and uh, started creating of the questionnaires and also patient information forms, ethics committee submission forms and, and informed consent forms. Here you see the steering committee. Here uh, I can say that good communication with your project advisor and also with the steering committee is crucial. You can ask them uh, questions if you have in mind and it is good to circulate the documents a few times and request feedback from the steering committee members to online meetings when required. Uh, 
And if possible, check the questionnaire and answer options with a statistician to avoid regrets while analyzing data. And then you need to take an uh, ethics approval uh, by your center. Uh, and then you need to test the documents. Uh, you need to do uh, plot testing, pilot testing in five or 10 patients. Uh, the steering committee members may help you in do doing this uh, pilot testing. And then you uh, roll out your project, invite other centers and post the project on UK websites and uh, uh, you care uh, office will help you in that. And uh, here, uh, don't forget that ethics approval for all the participating centers is generally needed. So take this in mind while determining project duration and translation of the questionnaires into target languages and pilot testing is best performed by steering committee members. So uh, ask uh, for their help. If the translation process uh, cannot be done in the steering committee members, by the steering committee members, then you can uh, ask the participating centers uh, to translate the questionnaires. And if there are more than one center, then that's a good uh, option. And they can also share the task and do it more quickly. And uh, you need to work closely with the UK office, send invitation emails a few times to increase participation. You can also email your UK friends, close friends to increase participation. And the authorship criteria should not be that easy, but should not be that difficult uh, not to discourage participation to your project. And then uh, after your project rolls out and uh, the participating centers already uh, participated and you started, uh, you can uh, send updates about the patient numbers where you stand preliminary analysis to the uh, participating centers. Then when it's completed, uh, the time for data analysis comes and you can uh, present uh, your results, preliminary results in the Congresses, you care meetings, Global Arctic Area Forum meetings. I had the chance to get a poster prize with the Prex CEU results here. I need to uh, tell you that it is important to check the data quality after you have the data and uh, contact the site when there is confusion about the data. Uh, for this, you need to ensure that uh, you know where the data comes from. So uh, don't forget to put on the questionnaires the site and the physician's names to be contacted if uh, there is something missing about the data. So the publication process is the most rewarding, rewarding uh, process with uh, PREXCU. We had three uh, nice papers uh, which were published in uh, high impact journals. Here, the feedback from the project advisor, the steering committee members and co-authors are like diamond and they improve the manuscript very much. The medical writer also, if you have a chance to uh, work with a medical writer, helps with English editing, improving tables, and helps with the submission process when there is a lot of co-authors. And the celebration process, of, of course, it's optional. I made a PREXCU cake and wanted to celebrate it with my project advisor, Marcus. And then uh, I did the COVAX CU project. In this project, we evaluated the effects of COVID-19 vaccination in chronic root care patients. Here is the EIQ poster we presented. And now it is submitted to allergy journal. Fingers crossed. We are hoping uh, for good revisions and acceptance. So as a summary, uh, in UK projects, you are never alone. You have the power of a large sample size with great diversity from all over the world. And you have the support of your colleagues, not only with your data, but with their hearts. And uh, they wish all the best for the success of uh, the project. And it makes you feel more powerful and supported. And together we are stronger. Uh, thank you for your attention. I hope I could inspire you for doing UCARE projects. If you have something in mind, just write to the UCARE office and write your proposal. Thank you. Thank you, Tashikuler.
Very nice, Emek. Uh, really, uh, I, I think it transpires that it's fun to be uh, in a project, to run a project, to have that idea and to see it through all the way until you finally see the results appear in PubMed in uh, your in your publication. I see uh, questions coming in. That's great. Uh, those of you who are on this webinar, you uh, please continue to send your questions. I will collect them and then we can discuss at the end. But maybe Yulia will actually answer some of these questions with um, her next presentation. So I'm going to wait with the questions. Please keep sending more Q&A on the bottom. Uh, and for now, let's turn to Yulia. Yulia is, of course, uh, from the UK much. office. She will be sharing her screen okay. to, I... to uh, tell us um, okay. a little bit about how the UK office can help, help you yes. with your projects and what they are uh, doing to make projects successful. Thanks, thanks again. I'm really happy to be here. And yes, we heard a lot of inspiring things about the, I should say, the science side, of course. And now, um, as a representative of the UCARE office, I'd like to just talk about the logistics side and how we as the UCARE office can help you in um, doing your project. So how can we help? Of course, uh, before the project, we can also um, help you get going. And then while the project is going on, we help you with organization and communication with your tools and documents, website and social media, our UCARE member area on the website, and then network in general. So before the application. Um, in general, maybe you checked our FAQ, but you're still not sure. Maybe you're not sure if your application is ready for a submission or you just have questions about UK in general. No problem. We are very nice. We don't buy it. Just write to us and we're happy to answer all your questions beforehand. And so let's say your project was accepted. Great. You're ready to start. So now you need help with organizing the first steps. So we can help you coordinate appointments, for example, with your steering committee. Just let us know who it is, when you want the meeting to be, how long, and we'll help you organize it and set up a meeting. We also act as a point of contact between you and other interested parties. Maybe somebody heard about the project at a conference or from the website and they, they're not sure how to get in touch with you. We're happy to facilitate here. And uh, one big thing that uh, the others have already talked about is we send out emails on behalf of you or your project lead. So it could be just to specific UCARES or specific people, or of course, for the global rollout to all UCARES. And we're also happy to write follow-up emails. Just let us know what to write, how to do it, and we're happy to help. And of course, I'm always happy to get on a call with you if you have any questions about your next steps. Then speaking about the tools and documents, uh, my previous uh, speakers have already talked about this, but um, once again, the UK network can offer you help with the medical writing and statistics part. And we do also have templates for certain uh, forms such as patient information forms, patient surveys, informed consent. And um, we can also help you with facilitating translation for these forms. I'll talk about that a bit more in a second. And one big asset that we have is our website and our social media channel. So um, the others already talked about the website. We just relaunched this a few months ago, making it more clean and really putting a focus also on the scientific projects. So as soon as you're ready, we can work together, write a text, uh, which you can say exactly what you wanted to say and any changes can be made super quick because I'm the one doing them. So just let me know. And I'll make an entry on the website and give others a chance to learn about your project, get in touch with you. And yes, like I said, it's all dictated by you. The content can be changed any times. And of course, once you have um, publications, we will also link them on your project page and also on our spe specific uh, publications page. So it's never going away. And the more people see it, the more people will read and cite your work, which is exciting. And so, yeah, like the others already showed a bit, this is what it looks like. So we have um, different categories, so current, upcoming, and past projects. So it will just get moved along. And like I said, will never disappear. And um, we also have, of course, social media channels, for example, LinkedIn, where we can also, if you want, um, disseminate your project. And of course, we love celebrating when a project is finished. 
Then uh, a new and exciting development we have is our new UCARE member area. So the UCARE member area is accessible if you're a member of a UCARE. Um, everybody can get access. If you don't have it yet, let us know. Well, we're happy to send you an access link. In the UCARE member area, there's different circles. There is the general UCARE circles, which is where we upload just a lot of general information, templates, but also project um, tools and documents from other projects that are past and ongoing. So you can actually have a look and see how other similar projects, for example, wrote their ethics approval or whatever is on there. So it's actually a really, really important tool for you, especially if you're not really sure how to maybe to work with this, these documents. And another big thing we can offer here is a closed circle for just your project. And here, instead of just having everybody who's a UK member, we can invite specific people, for example, your steering committee and other members that you'd like to be invited. And there you could um, upload project documents. You can, um, they can be commented on, they can be signed. So this is an option we offer. Um, if you want to take it. And I think it's um, going forward, this could be a very valuable tool to safely share documents with a close circle of people. And um, yeah, like I already said, there you can find templates and also inspiration from other projects as well. And um, yeah, last but not least, of course, the network in itself. My um, previous um, presenters already talked about the UK network as a whole, but of course, going through the UK network will give you access to not only the best OT cardiologists worldwide, but a really big pool of study participants. And you will get logistical support from me and my colleagues at the UK office, which I think could be very valuable because, I mean, you want to do the exciting science and not so much writing the boring emails, and we're happy to help with that. And of course, you get support from uh, your advisor, from the steering committee. And uh, really, last but not least, uh, you always have the possibility to present your project results or even your project before you have results at our events such as GOF, which is in less than two weeks, uh, or the UK conference. So um, uh, to be said, thank you very much. If, if you have any questions and you want more information, please visit our website. Get in, You can get in touch with us over the website, but just have a look, click around, or you can always email the UCARE office and we are happy to help you. Thank you very much. And I think now I open for the Q&A. Super, super. Thank you very, very much, Julia. Not only for your super presentation, but also for being there for us as uh, primary point of contact for all questions related to UK projects. And the first question we have here is, you talked a lot about uh, the learnings, but what were some of the challenges that you had to overcome? For example, is it possible to send samples from patients across the whole world to be analyzed at a central UK um, in one of the projects. Uh, I, I see you nod, uh, Emek, maybe you want to take it, but I also know that this was an issue with your project, um, uh, Hannah. Uh, let's, let's see uh, what the insights were from recent projects. Yes, uh, I didn't uh, uh, expect any uh, uh, samples from the site, so I have no experience with that, but I think the, with the Q Tiger, it will be done uh, i think it's possible it it just depends on the budget and uh, the ethics committee if there is no limitations for the country it can be sent and done i don't see any limitations for that so you're right it usually is no problem and uh, can be done it is sometimes difficult from one country to another country to send biological material but the UK office and the UK steering committee uh, can help with this as well so don't make that a, a hurdle to your projects we do want projects where we together analyze samples from patients uh, data from uh, patients, obviously, uh, of course, but also samples such as blood or skin or um, or, or urine samples that, that have come up with some of the projects. Um, very good. Uh, what about help with data analysis and how do you make sure that the data are good? 
I guess what that means is that in a clinical trial, we have um, uh, queries and a data manager and, and uh, people who uh, come and monitor our data entry, which we do not have in UCARE projects for lack of resources. Are there any tips, uh, tricks you can share to make sure that the data that in the end uh, uh, are looked at, that they are good, well sorted, easy to analyze. What's your what's your recommendation? Yes, uh, for this, Marcus, uh, using this uh, data capturing uh, tools is really very important. They don't let uh, the answers to be left uh, empty. So you have to answer to skip to the other question. This is one tip, and you can also make data quality checks, for example, in two months apart, so that if you see something confusing or lacking, then you can go back to the site, contact with the site and uh, let them know, uh, or you can get uh, uh, further information. And uh, these are my tips uh, at this point. I think that was really one of the biggest learnings in the beginning that uh, the, the pilot project part is really important to see that things work, you know that people from different UCARES enter the data the right way so that you can avoid um, a mistake becoming systemic. Uh, and in the end, you look at 10,000 data um, and uh, they're all wrong. Or, mm -hmm. uh, whereas if you look at 10 data sets and you see a mistake, you can inform the other you cares on how to do it correctly. And that really makes sense, this quality control as you go. <clears throat> so another question here in um, uh, how do you make sure that there is a scientific question addressed by the questionnaire that you develop. And I'll go first and then you guys can, can go second because I think one of the major learnings was from, from our first projects is, uh, was that maybe when we do that, we want to use this as a unique opportunity to get as much information as possible. And our questionnaires tend to get quite long. And uh, of course, a long questionnaire takes longer for patients to click. No, that's one point. But also you end up with a lot of data. A lot of data can be good if you have a clear plan on what to do with them. If you have a question uh, where the answers to the questions in the questionnaire really provide a story flow. And I think my solution to it was when I gave advice to some of these questionnaires being developed is what are you going to tell in terms of the story that comes from the data. And uh, one of the tricks that I uh, shared with some of the project leaders was write the paper before you have the data. Assume data, you know, think, uh, think of reasonable questions uh, and reasonable answers that you will get. And then pretend that you have the information from the questionnaire that you expect to get and start to develop a storyline, a, um, a, a manuscript, if you want, um, to see, do you have everything that you need to tell that story? And maybe there are a lot of questions that don't really give you information you need to tell that story. I see you uh, nod your head, Emek. Uh, is that Does that make sense? Yes, yes. In PREXCU, for example, we asked one question the way around and then uh, it was really hard to uh, comprehend the data afterwards uh, because you are confused if the patient answers right this way or other way. So it's, uh, yes, as you say, it's good to keep it short and precise. Yeah. Very good. You can always do a follow-up yeah. uh, project, yeah. and uh, there's many different ways to do a project. Um, I have someone here uh, asking, do you use Google Forms? Uh, is that, do, do you guys know, do we use Google Forms yeah. in some of the projects? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. Okay. And now uh, Murat has used it in one of his projects. Okay. And Red, what did you say RedCap is also Red being Cap. used? RedCap is also used. And I think now we are using the Soshi Q. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, it's also, uh, there are many data capturing tools, but I know RedCap, Soshi Q, I, I may not say it's on the right way. And also Google Forms possible. Okay. If you have um, SurveyMonkey is also. SurveyMonkey, Survey yeah. 
Mm-hmm. Very good. I have another question here, and that is, can we use uh, patient-reported outcome measures in our UCARE projects? Um, are there any limitations, costs with that? Uh, uh, are there any projects already ongoing with patient-reported outcome measures? And I'll, I'll start. You can, you guys can uh, compliment me. Yes, there are. Uh, Ivan and uh, his team have uh, started to look at the use of patient-reported outcome measures, both on the physician side and now on the patient side in many of our um, survey-driven projects, we include patient reported outcomes to capture disease activity, for example, or disease control, and to link it to something else, pregnancy, for example, or um, other aspects. So yes, that's definitely possible. And I can I can tell you that the uh, patient reported outcome measures that are relevant to us, like the UCT, the KuQual, but also the angioedema tools are always made available free of charge to all the project leaders. So that's good. And uh, are they able? Oh, yeah. So it's good to pick tools that are available in many languages. No, the uh, UNC carrier control test, for example, is available uh, uh, in, in 89 languages or something. So that's good because then you don't need to, for your project, work with uh, um, uh, homemade translations. You want validated translations and this is what's available. So if you pick a tool to include in your project, in your survey, it's best to make sure that it's freely available for scientific research and that many validated country versions exist to minimize uh, the uh, um, yeah the efforts that come with translating them and also to improve on the quality by working with validated translated versions. So that's uh, that's very good. And we have here. Tell us more about Uversicu. <laughs> yeah, well, that goes to you, Anna. I'm, I'm, uh, they have right, I guess. <laughs> I think people are intrigued that you're working with biopsies. This is what you <laughs> did, right? So we, we, so this was a questionnaire based. So we did work with biopsies, but of course we, yeah, we included patients um, who had um, biopsies done. Um, yeah, and this project, I hope finally soon we can submit the manuscript, but um, in the reviewing process, there are many arising questions. And then we go back to the, you know, we go back to the database, we go back to the centers. And um, yeah, so sometimes, uh, <laughs> so it's a very um old project um, I would say so it was one of the first ones and um, you know now with the experience also from other projects um, maybe we would have used um, a different database for example okay. um, so yeah we learned a lot uh, during this process but um, I hope soon I can share the publication but I'm sorry <laughs> and Pavel has just posted Uversico will be uh, submitted soon the paper this is a great project yes Pavel I absolutely agree with you <laughs> Very good. Yeah, maybe that's a good question uh, to you and uh, to Emek what would you have done differently um, uh, what, what's the one thing you would definitely not do again that way what 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 could you what, what's what comes to mind yeah, so I don't want to go into too much detail, but in Uversicu, we really started with sending the questionnaires out and getting the questionnaires, and we put all the data from the questionnaires into a database. Yeah. And of course, this would it would be really easy to have an electronic questionnaire yeah. and then a database and then the queries and then going back to the centers, then doing all those steps by yourself. But yeah. of course, this is a learning and... <laughs> Yeah, but I think this um, would be a lot uh, would have been a lot of a lot easier um, using some professional tools. Now we know this. <laughs> well, we live, we learn, Hannah, right? And yeah. that's part of the process, no? <laughs> Epic. So we are improving and learning. So there is no failure. It's all gaining, I, I believe. So it's uh, good to be on the way and improving. So yes, as uh, Hannah said, 
I would definitely use the data capturing tools and I would do a quality data check more often and enter the data and check uh, as Moitza nicely did in her uh, projects and, uh, and uh, it's really helps with the data quality. And yes, maybe lowering the uh, number of questions is also important, but I'm not sure if I can do it in RIPA CU. <laughs> <laughs> it's tempting, no, to include a lot of questions and not miss any information. Yeah. Look, we have another question here. It says, Wealthy is a good tool to implement Delphi methods, consensus finding method methods and acquiring opinions. Does UCARE use this tool, Wealthy? Uh, to come to decisions in some of our projects. Uh, yes, we do. The UCARE uh, um, office owns Wealthy, has access to Wealthy and has Wealthy specialists uh, uh, and is using this not for a UCARE project yet, but for an ACARE project. Our twin network is running the uh, dance project where we establish a global consensus on the classification nomenclature and uh, abbreviations of angioedema. And this is done, or was done, is completed now with the help of Wealthy. So if you want to uh, run a consensus finding project, that's also possible. Reach out to Julia and she will connect you to the uh, Wealthy experts at her fingertips. Julia, do you have an overview of how many projects are now running or starting soon, just to give us an idea? Um, yes, so we have, it depends a bit how you count, I will say, but uh, I we count projects as well um, finished when they're ready, when they've when they're in like the data evaluation stage, when they're not like in like the rollout stage anymore. But of course, they're only really finished if they have like all their publications out. But um, right now, so we have, I think, um, 10 upcoming projects in various uh, stages. Some of them are short, shortly before the global rollout and some are just in the beginning, the planning stage. Okay. And um, we have um, two that are like still in rollout uh, and then three, four, yeah, and then a bunch uh, that are completely completed and um, a few that are like in the data analysis stage. So, for example, Super. Super. So, room room for more, Julia? Yes. Yeah, sure. Always. <laughs> oh, there you go. That was the, that's a true UCARE answer. Um, yes, we can. And uh, we want to help you run your UCARE uh, project. Of course, it would be nice if every UCARE participated in every UCARE project. We know that this is not uh, uh, feasible, but pick one or two or three or ten that you are really interested in and want to uh, contribute to. And once you have a better idea uh, of what you want to make your UCARE project, do reach out to us. I think that's the bottom line that all four of us want to share with you today. Um, don't make the project uh, too short because some uh, of the centers need time to translate the, uh, the tools, to uh, uh, get ethics approval. <clears throat> so talk to us uh, and um, we will have advice for you on how to best schedule your project. Look, this doesn't have to end today. Send us your questions, send us your ideas, talk to us, to the UK office, to the project leads and uh, stay in touch. Come to Berlin for Global Duty Carrier Forum in two weeks and continue to come to our meetings. Uh, next one, UK conference in Sao Paulo in December of next year. <clears throat> so go check out what's going on because all UCARE projects will be discussed at all UCARE conferences. And with that, let us thank our sponsors one more time, not just for being able uh, to or making us able to have these webinars to share with you, but also, of course, for support of our network and thereby um, the projects. And thank you to our net facilitators. Thank you, Martina and the team and Materia Prima for connecting us today. We're looking forward to next webinars from UCARE Level Up. Thank you, Emek. Thank you, Hannah. Thank you, Julia. And thank you all for listening and tuning in. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank Bye. you.